It's a melting pot of cultures, cooking techniques, ingredients, flavors and spices from all who've had a hand in the making of the nation. Taino, Spanish, British, African, Chinese, Indian and others shaping a national culinary palate that's more than 50 years in the making. Jamaica's cuisine has come a far way. The island now boasts dozens of fast food chains, oriental restaurants, all natural eateries and indigenous food shops that serve a buffet of dishes, many of which were not celebrated fair just 50 years ago when Jamaica was a newly independent nation. I'm coming from an era during the colonial period when Jamaican food was looked down on. As a young student in, in, in primary school, you couldn't take, if you take certain foods as, as, as lunch, you would have to hide that. For example, bami, bami and egg or kalalu and salt fish or aki and salt fish. You wouldn't want anybody to see that because it looks as if you are extremely poor. Those days are behind us and credit must go to government bodies like the Jamaica Cultural Development Commission, which has been promoting the consumption of authentic Jamaican foods since its culinary competition in hotels was introduced in 1965. They were restricted to local produce and in doing so, they were able to come up with some very creative combination. With these dishes added to the hotel's regular menus, tourists quickly developed a taste for the local cuisine and the stigma attached to Jamaican foods at the turn of independence began to dissipate. This fed into the local agricultural sector, prompting more farmers to plant the foods that were the staples of their multi-ethnic culinary inheritance. When we roast the yellow yam, when we roast the yellow yam, do you like roast yam? <laughs> You're not alone. Many Jamaicans have acquired a taste for this particular dish, and they didn't have to look far for its creation. Roasting is a centuries-old cooking style that Jamaicans owe to the Taino peoples that once occupied this land. Just 50 years ago, it was still a time-consuming, more labor-intensive practice of roasting ground provisions and meats in the earth. They even roast the fish in the earth and then they scrape it off. Now Jamaicans from all walks of life are roasting, over grills, on meat sheets, in less time, but with as much flavor as their ancestors. Since the arrival of Christopher Columbus in the 15th century, Spanish flavors have been spicing up Jamaican pots on a regular basis. One particular cooking style and its most popular creation has made a big impression. We, in Spain, we fry a lot. There is definitely the one dish that uh, has a clear uh, connection with Spain, which is the uh, escovitch. Empanada to the Spanish, patty to Jamaicans. Since the late 1970s to early 1980s, this meat-filled dough dish has been another favorite. The concept is very much the same. The difference would be, and there, there is again a mixture of other cultures. In this regard, I guess, the British and the Indians, the filling. Thanks to a blossoming Spanish presence in the local accommodation sector, especially since the 1990s, there is a resurgence of Spanish flavors and cooking styles on the Jamaican culinary scene. As the local cattle industry beefed up its output in the 1960s, Jamaicans wholeheartedly reclaimed one of their favorite pre-independence imports. Now on a Saturday, there is hardly a household that is not cooking either the popular beef soup or one of its other variations. The British like to boil, and it's from them that we've adopted this cooking method to serve up a wide array of dishes that are uniquely Jamaican. Hot as it is, Jamaicans love their teas. And while traditional English flavors were the popular choices for about the first two decades of independence, industrious Jamaicans have more recently been bagging indigenous and African-inspired flavors. It could have been the love for teas by the English that prompted then-governor Sir Nicholas Laws to plant coffee seedlings in the island back in the 1700s. From the first plant in Temple Hall, St. Andrew, the Blue Mountain Coffee is now a global brand. Have your tea or coffee with a side of sweet cake, pie or bun and savor one of the Brits' best gifts to their former colony.
With about 90% of the Jamaican population claiming African heritage, it's easy to see why the continent gets credit for most of what we eat. But there was a time when claiming that particular heritage was not for popular consumption. You wouldn't find Bami being sold in the supermarket in the 60s or late 70s. Green bananas were a no-no if you're sort of, you know, it was a very peasant thing and you couldn't say that you're eating green bananas. No more. Today, Jamaicans of all ethnicities delight in their prickled or corn meats, mackerel rondong, and yes, the many faces of bami and banana, green, ripe, boiled, fried, however you want it. What would the Jamaican diet look like without the maroons? They would catch the wild hog. They would prepare that wild hog and they would dig a hole and they put the fire in the earth in the hole and they would set up a wooden grill over that hole and anchor these um, sticks with, with stones and so on. And then they would have the pig um, on that pimento, green pimento wood that is anchored over that hole. And that was how they would roast the pig. After they seasoned it, of course, with bird pepper and pepper elder. And from the hole emerged the most popular maroon gift to the dinner plate, jerk. In the 1980s, you could only get jerk pork in Portland. Only at um, the Port Antonio market on a Saturday when the, the maroons used to go there to, um, to sell it. And then afterwards, I think one of the maroons was started the stand at Boston. Giving us the widely popular Boston jerk pork and its many challenges from all across the island. The truth is over the last 50 years, we have had a major integration of, of Indian culinary arts into Jamaican art. The most popular integration is not a specific dish, it's a spice. While Jamaicans tend to rub it on the meat and the Indians are more likely to put it in hot oil, everyone agrees, curry is a much appreciated import from the Asian continent. You know, in Jamaica, we are very adventurous. We like to go beyond what we are accustomed to. So we move from curry go to curry chicken and all sorts of things are being curried too. The Jamaican restaurant sector has been steadily growing since independence, with Chinese eateries becoming one of the strongest forces. And as a result... The Jamaicans have come to embrace the Chinese cuisine because it, it's good. Well, you know Jamaicans, sometimes we cook the Chinese thing at home with the soya sauce, but we have to throw a little jerk seasoning in it and what have you, because it's a combination of flavors. Organic. It's the hippest food term of the 21st century. But what is now a trend for many has been a staple for the Rastafarian community since the birth of the faith. But when Rasta say ital food and no deaders and no flesh and face and bone and People used to look at it with scorn and say, breeze are going to blow you away, and you know, up to now, no breeze no blow you away. You see, if you have the proper combination of season in your pot and, and the proper timing, you don't need to use the salt and the other little artificial thing. Many Jamaicans still cook with salt, and meats remain a constant, but the healthy lifestyle pushed decades ago by the Rastafarian community is now a well accepted and celebrated way to live. So, had your fill? But what about the drink? No Jamaican cookbook could be complete without this chapter. Whether it stems from a fruit or it's brewed in a lab, Jamaicans love to imbibe. So ginger beer, to lemonade, and then we have sorrel. And we have been making a lot of drinks with, with our fruits, like um, sour sap punch, and um, we make breadfruit punch and sorrel and at Christmas time there's egg punch. Now that is the perfect cap on a multi-ethnic menu fit for the most iry people in the world. 
With influences from the east to the west and the encouragement of a few key groups and agencies, Jamaica's culinary heritage has evolved into a true melting pot of cultures. 